Okay, this has been a pet project for a long time. I wanted to create something that used a radar sensor, an ESP32, and some LEDs. In this case, I'm using a WLED software, and I wanted to control the lights based off the information from the sensor. But the thing is, is I really wanted it to be fluid, useful, something that I could just integrate into lighting, and I, I kind of just ended up making a Halloween toy. Like imagine if this was built into a Halloween decoration of some kind, like a skeleton or a pumpkin. And as people came up to trick or treat, the eyes followed them and moved. Maybe an audio thing triggered if they got too close. I don't know. You're tinkering and making your own Halloween decorations. In this case, I'm just making the lamp of some sort. Now keep in mind, I've been working on this for a while. It's been through a few iterations and this specifically was something that I printed, I designed and then I printed and it's like version 1.3 of like a little mounting light concept. The idea of this is that I could put it on the wall, it would light up the wall and then if I got close to the sensor that it could make it a little brighter or if I was farther away from the sensor, it would just make it dimmer. That works, but for the purpose of this video, I wanted to make eyes that followed just to see if I could do it. Now, what you see here is a Screek sensor. As far as I know, you can only really order these things on eBay, but it's essentially an LD2450 millimeter wave sensor with an uh, ESP32C3 mini. The case itself is actually 3D printed and more or less, this is like somebody at home tinkering and like making a product and then selling it on eBay, which I absolutely respect a lot. I like the idea, I like the concept. I think it was like $28 or something like that, which yes, if you were to go on AliExpress and buy the sensors and buy the ESP32s and the 3D printers and everything you need to make it, you can make it a heck of a lot cheaper than $28. But if you want one sensor and everything works, that's why I appreciate something like that. It's like, yeah, this works, it's open, here you go. It's not all hardware, right? A lot of stuff went into this with the software, meaning that you would actually have a firmware that you could upload to the sensor and you would be able to utilize it without, in my case, using Home Assistant and an ESP Home software, without needing that software. You could attach it to something else. It's kind of up to what you want to attach it to, but you can if you want to. I, however, went the route of ESP Home. And the reason why is very simple. The firmware that you can download and you can run directly off that, Home Assistant can pick up and it can display it as sensors, the X and the Y. But I found it very jittery, not very quick, and would actually crash out a lot more than what you can download on your own, which is an ESP Home modified version, YAML. This comes from the LD2450 sensor being available in ESP Home now, and being able to directly integrate it into Home Assistant and ESP Home makes things a heck of a lot faster and customizable. I mean, after all, this is kind of like a home tinkering thing, so it makes sense to be able to modify things and adjust things. Specifically, the ESP Home YAML that I'm going to link in the description down below had a 100 millisecond throttle, and as I was playing around with it, moving back and forth on the sensor, I found that 200 milliseconds was the best. Are we just not moving anymore? Did we give up? I guess we did. In my particular LED setup, like I said, I 3D printed this. It's a mounting thing. It takes a power source. These LEDs specifically are five volts, but it's just, I mean, you can get RGB LEDs, like the uh, individually controlled RGB LEDs and many different types of voltages. So I went with five volts. I actually kind of regret it. I built an ESP32 right into the base of this and I used a little aluminum rod, a little housing fixture and that's, Pretty much it. It's just all homemade. But for the LEDs, I used BFG lighting. I'll link to it in the description. Got them off Amazon. I'll link to it in the description down below. Um, pretty much they're just individually controlled RGB lights and they're pretty dense, which allowed me to kind of create the eye effect where they're really close to each other when it wants to move. Something to keep in mind, if you're working with a large amount of LEDs, the power consumption can you know, build up pretty quick. So just keep that in mind. Your power source is gonna be important. I actually ended up making my own power source or at least ordering kind of like a voltage regulator to where I could use any power source that I had available. So that's again, kind of a custom solution that I needed just because I wanted to be able to use whatever power supply I wanted. But that brings me to the software. Like I said, Home Assistant, ESP Home, WLED, that's the software that I use, but I did use automations and had to create a custom automation to create these eyes to where I can make it lock onto something and 
you know, if it actually works, follow that around like a set of eyes would. I'm not a programmer though. So a lot of challenges and a lot of different versions and a lot of help from ChatGPT came into play in order to make this kind of sort of work. And I found that demonstrating this is just difficult because of the way radar works, right? I mean, or at least the sensor works. It's just, if you have something in the background like a chair and you move your head around like this, it may or may not pick up the chair over your head. But if you move the chair with your head, it's gonna be a little bit more reliable sometimes to follow your head. So <laughs> it's challenging, mainly because I'm trying to program. I don't really know what I'm doing and I'm winging it as I go along in order to make software or eyes or a lamp or whatever function the way I want to and then ac accommodate any variables like jitter for example. Over the course of this project, I've played with probably three or four, I'm gonna say four different millimeter wave sensors. I landed on this because it tracks X and it tracks Y, meaning X will tell you how it goes from left to right and Y will tell you how close you are. So the software I made in the perfect world when it's working would not only track where I am like this, but then when I got closer, if I actually made it right, the LEDs would get brighter and the further away, they would get a little bit dimmer. Like I said, it doesn't always work perfectly, but that's kind of why I wanted to use this sensor over the other sensors, which only tracked the distance of a target. I believe, and I don't remember what it is, the 20, LD2600, maybe? The 2600 can track up to eight people, and it's better, I think, at not dropping out or not switching to a different target, but it's not as fast which I don't necessarily know is a bad thing in my use case. Since I'm routing everything through a sensor built on an ESP32 through ESP Home on Home Assistant to another ESP32 and then WLED the software using a JSON API REST command built into my configuration.yaml, there's so many different building blocks to this. All of that, rather than tying a sensor directly to the LEDs, all of that causes a little bit of lag. It causes a little bit of delay and it makes it not perfectly reliable for something like this. Like I'm thinking to myself, if I were to actually make a Halloween decoration, like a, a skeleton or a pumpkin or something like that, and it would be following people around or maybe the uh, jack-o'-lantern would get brighter if you approached it or something, whatever it is that you I came up with, uh, if I were to do that, I would probably make a system that was all in one that I could configure remotely and not rely on Home Assistant to be kind of the backbone of the system. To reduce the stress, I do things like on the sensor itself, the X and the Y, I reduce the logging. Uh, like when it goes to your Home Assistant logbook, it doesn't need to do that. When it's keeping a history of X for however long Home Assistant's gonna keep in history, I don't need that. Every single time it fires and it changes every single individual LED, it does not need a recorded history of that either. I'm going to upload the two versions of my code to GitHub before I post this video so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And if you actually know what you're doing, you might be able to fix my code and make it more reliable. Uh, maybe even integrate it into an all-in-one system that I could remotely do without actually having to lean on Home Assistant to handle all the processing. I don't know, but I'm gonna upload that and you can check it out. This is one of those projects where it's evolved as it's went along. I've learned as I went. I've had to completely start over because I learned something or got a new sensor or whatever and I wanted to try something different. So right now I have three different scripts. I have one that changes the brightness, the Kelvin, everything as you get closer to a sensor. Uh, I have another one that has the two eyes, which is what you see here, and one that has an individual eye. The scripts with the eyes, it allows you to adjust based off how many LEDs you have, where the eye is going to be, the max from the left to the right. You can reverse uh, the direction. So if you happen to have your LEDs in the wrong direction, you can reverse it. So I've tried to build it as robust as I could, at least I could imagine, um, but it's, you know, made by me, so not a programmer. Um, also, these scripts are designed specifically for the WLED software. It uh, actually builds a payload, uses a REST command, and sends that to an LED or WLED device. So if you want to change, like let's say you don't want to individually control every single LED and you just want to change that payload to 
only give brightness or something like that, you'll have to modify the script, just depending on what you want to do. Either way, this has been a project that I've been tinkering with for a while, so I figured I'd share my progress and figured if anybody wants to mess around with it, at least I have a little bit of a foundation. It really likes my chair, look at that. It doesn't always work like this. At least people will have a foundation and they can start tinkering themselves. Or maybe somebody who's better at programming and can show me how it's done. So links are in the description down below, GitHub, products, I'll link to the eBay store if I can find it. I'm pretty sure it's only eBay, maybe it's other places, I don't know. Uh, I'll link to everything that I can find in the description down below. If you guys have any recommendations or if you actually make it better, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe and have yourself a great day. Oh, hi dog.